Ashton Kutcher is a sitcom star and a king of pranks with legions of fans. But he's also acquired a long list of A-list enemies through a series of petty arguments and misunderstandings. These are the celebs who just can't stand Ashton Kutcher. When Ashton Kutcher replaced Charlie Sheen on Two and a Half Men in 2011, the outgoing star seemed totally fine with his replacement, at least at first. As he told TMZ, I think Ashton's gonna kill it. But in February 2012, Shane changed his tune, telling TMZ, I'm tired of pretending the show doesn't suck. I'm tired of pretending Ashton doesn't suck. A few days later, though, he apologized for his comments on his website. But then in 2014, he took to Twitter to call his former co-star John Cryer a genius, while also asking about his, quote, lame sidekick on Two and a Half Men. He followed up with yet another apology to Kutcher, before adding, Now quit barfing on my old brilliant show. That same year, Kutcher told Conan O'Brien, Brian that he had pretty much stopped listening to the things that Sheen said. And then he made an apt comparison to a certain classic cartoon. Charlie Sheen has become like a parent on Charlie Brown to me. It's more like wah, 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 wah. Ultimately, Sheen was apologetic yet again. During a January 2017 appearance on the Kyle and Jackie O radio show, he said, I was stupidly mean to Kutcher because I overlooked the reality and difficulty of taking over a show, so I should have been nicer. He also mentioned that he and Kutcher shook hands when they ran into each other at a Dodgers baseball game a few months earlier. So it sounds like things are on the mend for these two manly men. Comedian Kathy Griffin is no stranger to sharing her celebrity encounters with the rest of the class, and it sounds like her interactions with Ashton Kutcher were memorable for the wrong reasons. In her 2016 book, Kathy Griffin's Celebrity Run-Ins, My A to Z Index, she had some less than glowing things to say about the punk star, including calling him, quote, a tool. In 2005, she co-hosted a charity event with Kutcher, and he apparently didn't speak to her at all. As she wrote, it was bizarre and rude and made me feel as if he thought I was beneath him, someone not worth talking to in the slightest. She also also recounted running into Kutcher and his then-wife Demi Moore at a restaurant a few years later. I smiled and waved. Nothing. If you won't say hi to me in the Mexican takeout joint, you're a D-bag. Griffin also mentioned a time when she was in the middle of a conversation with Diddy, when Kutcher apparently walked in front of her and began to talk to Diddy like she wasn't even there. She summed her feelings by saying, Do I loathe him? No. He's just someone who's made it perfectly clear to me that I have absolutely nothing to offer him during his precious time on Earth. Ashton Kutcher married Demi Moore in 2005, but their relationship evidently hit one too many speed bumps. After reports alleging that Kutcher cheated on Moore surfaced in 2011, the two announced their separation. Kutcher filed divorce papers in 2012, citing irreconcilable differences. Moore's 2019 memoir, Inside Out, offers a glimpse into those differences. She wrote that she went, quote, into contortions to try to fit the mold of the woman Kutcher wanted his wife to be. She also explains that she went along with Kutcher's fantasy of threesomes, even though it wasn't her thing. According to her, this set the wheels of infidelity in motion. As she wrote, Because we had brought in a third party into our relationship, Ashton said, that blurred the lines and, to some extent, justified what he's done. Moore also suggested that Kutcher was dismissive of her battle with alcoholism. After the book hit the shelves and stories about the ex-couple's relationship started to hit the internet, Kutcher tweeted, I was about to push the button on a really snarky tweet. Then I saw my son, daughter, and wife, and I deleted it. The dust ultimately seems to have settled between the exes, though. When Kutcher appeared on Mark Maron's WTF podcast in February 2020, he assured listeners that things were all good. Ashton Kutcher doesn't like it when you get his name wrong, and Sharon Osbourne learned that the hard way. When she stopped by Larry King Now in 2018, she revealed that she didn't get along with Kutcher when he appeared on the 2014 episode of The Talk. She accidentally pulled in Adele Dazim, which led to an icy back and forth. He got upset after she messed up his name, and it was all downhill from there. He goes, and, and what are you? What have you done in this industry? And I was like, kid? Don't start with me, because I'm going <laughs> to eat you up and sh you out. Despite the friction during the interview, Osborne attempted to make light of the moment after taping. On October 24, 2014, she tweeted a photo that she took with Kutcher on the talk show set and wrote, I messed up at A plus K's introduction. I think I called him Aston Kushner. F sorry. Hopefully, she can look on the bright side by realizing that it could have been a lot worse. While she might have butchered his name, at least she didn't chuck a big slab of ham at him. As far as Clarissa Darling is concerned, Ashton Kutcher is no darling. While opening up about her party days in her book Melissa Explains It All, Melissa Joan Hart revealed that she clashed so much with Kutcher that she attempted to boot him from multiple parties. As she wrote, I do remember that twice I tried to kick Ashton Kutcher out, when he made smart-ass remarks to me after I asked him not to smoke in my house. But he never wanted to leave, and since I'm not burly enough to intimidate him into going, I eventually gave up. 
It was inevitable that Hart and Kutcher wound up at some of the same industry events due to the connections they share. As it turns out, Jason Goldberg, who started the production company Catalyst Media with Kutcher, is married to Soleil Moon Fry, Hart's former Sabrina the Teenage Witch co-star. Fry and Hart have been friends for years, which has led to Hart and Kutcher crossing paths every once in a while. But Hart hasn't exactly been clamoring to hang out with the co-captain of her friend's husband's production company. As she told Life in Style in 2013, Ashton and I just didn't get along. Clearly, she's still in the business of explaining it all. Ashton Kutcher was an early and successful investor in some Silicon Valley startups like Uber and Airbnb. But it's safe to say that musician Trent Reznor won't be tipping his cap to him anytime soon. Over the course of six years, Kutcher and an investment partner saw their fund of $30 million grow to $250 million. But Reznor couldn't care less. In a 2017 interview with Vulture, the Nine Inch Nails frontman discussed the topic of celebrities dipping their toes into the tech world. As he confessed, My experience with Beats Music and then at Apple largely was dismissed from outside, maybe justifiably, as here's another celebrity moron holding up a phone and expecting some sort of credit. That kind of situation, which mine isn't, would be insulting to the people that actually are doing the important jobs. Then he added for good measure, And I don't want to hear about Ashton Kutcher's a f***ing tech genius. I don't give a about that. He seems like an Ouch. Apparently, Kutcher must bow down before the one who burns. Ashton Kutcher had a short-lived spat with Miranda Lambert that, to be fair, actually wasn't much of a spat at all. It was more of a misunderstanding that could have spiraled into something bigger if it hadn't been nipped in the bud. At the 2012 Academy of Country Music Awards, Kutcher presented the trophy for Female Vocalist of the Year, but not before he offered up a rendition of George Strait's I Cross My Heart. Clad in a 10-gallon hat, a red western jacket, and a big belt buckle, he eventually presented the award to Lambert. Afterwards, Lambert tweeted, Was Ashton Kutcher making fun of country, or is it just me? Watching it back now, and I'm kinda wondering. She didn't have to wonder for too long, as Kutcher soon replied, I am one of the biggest country music fans you've ever met, wasn't making fun at all. A month after the ACM Awards, Lambert and Kutcher ran into each other again, this time at a Kentucky Derby party. The two took a selfie together that Lambert kindly shared on Twitter, along with the caption, Here it is, y'all. He is sweet and lives country music. For real. And he likes randoritas. It sounds like a derby miracle. Like Miranda Lambert, country artist Justin Moore did a double take at the outfit Kutcher wore at the 2012 ACM Awards. But unlike Lambert, he had a much less friendly reaction as he tweeted, Seen Ashton Kutcher at the ACMs tonight. What a douche. I don't care for people making a mockery of the way country artists dress. This led Kutcher to tweet in response, Justin Moore calls it mocking. I call it respecting your elders. Maybe that's old fashioned. No one to fold him, brother. Alas, Moore still was not having it as he replied, Go listen to Alan Jackson Gone Country, brother. You can't hang with me on old country, buddy. Not gonna happen. Unlike Kutcher and Lambert, Kutcher and Moore didn't eventually meet up and make up at a Kentucky Derby party. Instead, they let their feud just ride off into the sunset on its own, entirely unresolved. This one is more of a Shark Tank tip than a full-on feud. But who among us doesn't love a good tip between sharks? Kutcher and Kevin O'Leary didn't exactly seem like the best of chums during the Shark Tank Season 7 premiere when Kutcher was a guest shark, and it made for some thrilling TV. After O'Leary asked a contestant, Why are you doing this to yourself? Kutcher made his frustration clear by responding, You're belittling people and no, that's I'm not, not okay. Yeah, I'm you are. asking a question and I want an answer. O'Leary later addressed his short but sweet argument by tweeting, Belittling is not the same as being honest at A plus K. If you can't handle the truth, get out of the tank. Shark Tank regular Damon John wasn't on this episode, but he made it clear whose team he was on when he tweeted, Hashtag Shark Tank fans, I haven't pulled a Charlie Sheen. At A plus K, keeping the seat warm. And if he gives Kevin O'Leary a hard time, even better. Actor Scott Eastwood isn't necessarily mad at Ashton Kutcher, but Kutcher was reportedly not happy with Eastwood for talking about him on national TV. In 2015, Eastwood appeared on Watch What Happens Live and claimed that Kutcher hooked up with Eastwood's then-girlfriend a few years prior. Host Andy Cohen asked if Eastwood was referring to the Us Weekly report from 2011 regarding a woman Kutcher allegedly cheated on Demi Moore with in San Diego. Eastwood said that he was indeed in a relationship with that very woman at the time of the alleged dalliance. He then went on to call the affair the quote catalyst that broke up Moore and Kutcher. Eastwood also assured Cohen that he wasn't the least bit upset with Kutcher. Oh geez. Oh god, oh, this is wow. this is way Yeah. Okay, I need wow. a drink. While Eastwood may carry no hard feelings, the same can't necessarily be said about Kutcher. The day after the episode aired, Hollywood Life reported that Kutcher was, quote, livid with a source claiming, Ashton himself never confirmed he had an affair, nor did he ever admit that was the reason for his breakup with Demi Moore. For Scott to come out and say that has left him furious, because he likes to have his privacy. This may actually be an example of a celeb whom Ashton Kutcher can't stand, as opposed to the other way around. But it's probably safe to say that Scott Eastwood doesn't exactly love him if he's spreading gossip like this. 
Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Nicki Swift videos about your favorite stars are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.